Hey everyone, good morning. We are so just ready for the day. Happy daily drop-in. You know, Katie, I think we're gonna have a lot of fun today, but I will tell you, we have a lot to talk about. So are you like mm -hmm. mentally prepared for this morning's daily drop-in conversation? I've got my coffee, let's do this. Perfect, we are gonna get started with our morning cheers here in just a second. So feel free to get ready, comment in the comments, tell us where you're watching from. Apparently Periscope's not wa not working, so yeah. I'm gonna work on fixing that. And uh, we'll be back here to kick off your morning with the daily drop-in. <laughs> issues to our daily drop-in, Katie Miglin. What is going on? I might have. I don't know. My computer literally just said it's going to restart in 30 seconds. And I was like, uh, no, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> like we've had streaming issues this morning. Your computer's falling apart. Guys, this is not the way Tuesdays are supposed to go. No, I'm pretty sure like five minutes ago, you said today will be really easy. And yeah. I'm lying. this is terrible. I think we should just completely start over. Like, Okay. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Happy daily drop in. It's Tuesday. You look lovely. How are you? Thank you. I'm so great. Happy Tuesday, everyone. It's oh. good to see comments popping in. Yes, it is going to be the best day ever. We're so excited you're here. I will say, even with the tech issues that we're completely ignoring, we're thrilled that there's so many comments saying good morning. Everyone, please raise your glass. We are going to start with our morning cheers. Good morning. Happy Tuesday. Good we morning. hope that you are set and ready for your day and are, you know, grabbing your coffee, brushing your teeth, getting set for all the fun. Um, Katie, I know that we, well, I feel like we talk about you a lot. Like, I don't know if you know this, but mm, that's honestly, terrifying. Yeah, we do talk about you a ton. And so while everybody in the comments are, you know, saying good morning, hopefully sipping on their coffee, getting mentally prepared, ignoring the tech problems that we had earlier. Will you tell us a little about yourself? Who are you? Why are you so cool? All of you. <laughs> uh, sure, I'll do some of that. Um, I'm Katie Meglin, and I am a seventh grade math teacher in central mm -hmm. Illinois, specifically Bloomington. Um, oh, I'm I'm the online events coordinator with Teach Better Team, which really is I'm I'm the twelve hour girl. So, um, but yeah, I'm super excited to to start my day with Ray Heward and the Teach Better family. And yeah, so fun. Yeah. I uh, I will say you and I have worked together for years and you were always the teacher that I wanted to be friends with. You were like really cool and organized mm -hmm. and really neat things. And I'm just really proud to say that, you know, now we get to hang out all the time and work together also on the Teach Better team yeah. and coffee at 6 a.m. I mean, that's that's a big deal. Yeah, I feel like our friendship has really come a long way. You know, like four years ago, if you said, hey, wake up super early and drink coffee with me, I don't know that I would have said yes. <laughs> you know, thankfully, I feel like all the members of the Teach Better family are kind of getting used to popping in for the daily drop-in. It's happening every single morning, Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. Mm -hmm. Eastern. Katie and I are both in Illinois, so it is 6 a.m. right now, and we are set and ready to go, drinking our first cup of coffee, ready for the fun. Jeff yeah. Gargis is being a little obnoxious in the comments already this morning. Jeff, we, yeah. we love you. Take a deep breath, sip your coffee. We're thrilled you're here, but uh, he's at least happy to see you. So that's that's a good thing to the morning. Well, that is good. Yeah, he seems very aggressive so early. <laughs> Buddy, go back to your 5K. Yeah, he's sending, I, is that the angry emoji I see in his comments? So. It just seems a little aggressive. <laughs> right, Buddy, come on. Oh. It's a Tuesday. It is, it is Tuesday. Let's talk about this. Okay, so guys, good morning. Daily drop-in. It's Tuesday. We are in our second week of kicking off the daily drop-in that's happening now every single morning, Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. Eastern. And there's a lot that we're trying to, to do with this morning show. We want to make sure mm -hmm. that we connect you with new faces. We want you to continue to foster relationships and, and gain support, maybe get some inspiration. We have some good news that we're going to share every single morning. And we also just want to talk shop to make sure that you feel supported in not only 
what you're trying to do for the week, but also just how you're approaching your day. I know this week, Katie, is all about communication. I kind of thought it was perfect that you were coming on to discuss this because we used to do a ton of stuff. I know you continue to do a ton of stuff to communicate not only to parents, but to students and leadership. I mean, this is a really important topic right now with people heading back to school. Oh, yeah. I feel like August is kind of the best month to just drop a ton of communication Mm -hmm. to families, to students, to, you know, other coworkers. Just I feel like, you know, it's like summer is kind of like the lull. Your email goes a little quieter, you know, and you don't hear as much. But I'm already like just check. I feel like I'm back in the routine of checking it daily and just kind of communicating more with families. I was in the building yesterday. So yeah, it's, it's definitely the month of communication for sure. So perfect theme. Yeah, I am really excited to dive into that. And one element that I know you continue to emphasize, you really keep us centered on the team with this topic is the focus of wanting to make sure that when we are live talking about topics, we are able to give as many people as possible some really, really tactical strategies. Yeah. They can literally go implement tomorrow. I know Katie Giordano, at, or oh my God, Caitlin Giordano. I don't know if you caught, yeah, switching my my people. I don't know if you caught her episode last week, but she talked a lot about video. I really Mm -hmm. want to make sure that today is full of tips and tricks that everybody listening can go and truly do this week, later this afternoon, next week as you start. I know there's a lot of schools going back, so we want to give you as many tips and tricks as possible. Um, Should we start with good news and then go into the questions? I know people are going to be sharing a lot of questions in the comments here in a bit. Yeah, let's start with good news. It's early. So let's get some positivity going, especially with the angry, you know, emojis. You know, guys, while we uh, transition here to our good news segment, we'd really appreciate for you to add some happier emojis to our chat because Mm -hmm. Jeff Fergus is starting us off with the with the wrong type of angry face. That's not really what we want. I want like the sunglasses one or what about this one? I use that all the time. Yes. The purple hat. Do you know what I'm talking about? The purple. Ha- oh, the party one. Yes. Yes. He has a party when he's wearing a purple party cap. I Obviously. couldn't tell you what color that hat was, but I'm glad I know now. You know what? I'm going to play this thing. You need to go check your phone for those segments. I'm on it. Okay. Of course, Candace Miller puts the green hearts. Of course that makes sense. And then Rian right away follows up with that um, yes. cool emoji. I just really appreciate Zach is somebody that I met. He's a principal and a CPS and he gave us a full balance here. I don't know mm-hmm. the names of all the emojis, but I feel like those are some good ones right there. Oh, for sure. I think it's, I think the theme can be feel the love. Feel the love. What are your feelings on cat emojis versus non-cat emojis. He has a, he has a mix right here. I just wasn't sure. He does. Yeah. I, I'm not a big cat person, so I could do without them. Mm, I know. Not okay. Sorry. You don't like cats? What, why are you a hater? What's your problem? (laughs) Honestly, I, it's, it's really dumb. I think they're unpredictable. Like the animal as a species, like as a, as a whole. Yes. I, I never had cats in my life growing up. So now I just don't trust them. I just, Okay. I just don't. I don't know. I feel like maybe we could transition here into a little bit of like a therapy session of like what you may not <laughs> like. I'm I'm sure there's like a whole list of things that like probably are too much for a daily drive. Let's do the positivity. Let's bring I mean, the news. Let's just to confirm, Zach is now making up for it, putting some dog Ew. emojis. But he's he's complaining in the chat right now that there's not enough dog emoji options, and so he yes. feels like. We're limiting his his creativity. Thank you to all of you that are putting in the party emoji. Do you see that he has a purple hat? Do you see that? Okay. I see the purple hat. It's a purple yeah. hat. He just seems so happy blowing that horn. Now we're going to get to giraffe emojis. Is anybody There's else? A lot. Wow. <laughs> oh, my goodness, guys. Let's get into some good news. There are a lot of emojis coming in. We appreciate each and every one of you sharing all your love and happiness I really like this kid that we are going to be talking about in our good news segment because he too is sharing some inspiration and love, which he's doing not through emojis, but through online videos. Did you see this story, Katie? I don't think so. Okay. So this was earlier the earlier last week that this was published. This is a seven-year-old boy in Rhode Island, and he is posting inspirational videos about everything from back to school fears to self-image and more. The quote that they quoted him with on NBC News says, 
When I make videos, it makes me feel happy that other people can watch them and feel happy. So he's going through mm -hmm. and he says um, that he gets to pick a topic and then share his thoughts on that idea. He wants other kids to not feel alone. And um, he's kind of combating bullying by sharing his inspirational videos to lift other people up and share some humor. How adorable is that? You said he was seven? Seven years old. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. I know. I think this could be a really fun story to bring to your students or to bring or to like forward on to your staff. If you're if you're in a leadership role and you're looking for some content to share with your staff, this is a really easy clip to be mm -hmm. able to share over. There's some cute video clips of him sharing his inspirational videos, but also I can only imagine the discussions you could have with students on bullying or or the use of multimedia to share messages. Right. I mean, this is how students communicate. Well, remember when Kid President was like a big thing and everybody watched Kid President? I feel like this is the new Kid President, but it's it's more, it seems meatier. You know, he seems to be like kind of hitting on some, maybe some good topics that would really spark discussion. Well, and you know, from a parent perspective, you know, I, again, I'm not a parent, so I, I really try and see all viewpoints as often as possible, but there's a reality to, I don't, I don't have students living in my house that, that I'm then, you know, like sending off to school. If you have a child in your home that's struggling with the fear of going back to school or any anxiety, this could be a resource to not only foster that discussion, but also send some cool messages that you can share in the morning to start their day off right. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's awesome. Katie, you have a little one going to school this year. I do. I have a first grader. Oh my God. That makes that that's insane. I can't believe she's in yes. first grade. I know. Yeah. We're, we're getting all the things organized, you know, we're, I think we're in that weird transition of, I'm sure other kids can relate, but it's always interesting having one in your own house where it's summer's ending. The freedom is, you know, starting to dwindle and structure is coming back. And I don't know, it's just, it's crazy. I just feel like this summer has been awesome, but it's, I can't believe we're in August. So I want to preface, I, first of all, I love your daughters. You have two incredible daughters and your oldest headed into first grade is just such a rock star. Like if I had to pick one person to spend an entire day with, it's probably her and not you, just to be clear. <laughs> like she's the stinking best. Um, but I can only imagine like she had her first year as a kindergartner during COVID. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then you guys had a blast of an awesome summer together. I know you guys have done a ton of things. You just came back from vacation. Yep. Now you're headed into first grade. What are the details that you have right now about how that's going to look for her? Do you mind if, do you mind sharing that? I, I didn't even no. know. But. Yeah. So our district, uh, I actually teach in the same district that she's in, which is fun. Um, and we're going back five days a week with masks. So, um, but she's excited to be back. It's, it's so funny because last year, you know, we didn't have the back to school night. We didn't have open house. We didn't have all of that was virtual. And so, you know, we, we kind of were talking to her about some things like, oh, well, you know, next week you get to meet your teacher on Friday. We learn who your teacher is. And, and to her, she's like, well, why? And, you know, we're like, well, you know, that's what you usually do. But last year you didn't have that. So it's been kind of fun to to kind of have a first year with her because last year it was was in our dining room and, you know, and it was just not the same. So um, it, I'm excited for her to, like, feel what a real class feels like and um, just, yeah, to kind of get more of a school feeling. I'm a little I'm not going to lie. Um, I'm a little nervous about five days a week right off the bat because no one in our house has really had that yet in, you know, a year. So just if like in September, I'm just like, I don't know, like just sleeping all the time. It's just because it's been a rough transition. That makes sense though. I mean, weekends are for 48 hours of sleep. I, I have to tell you, and people do not talk about this enough. And I want to get back to, to your daughter in a second. People do not talk about teacher tired that first week of school. We do not talk about it as much as we could because there is nothing like teacher tired the first week back of school. There is no. nothing like it. No. And honestly, I, okay. Can I, can I argue with you? I think it's not the first week. I think it's the second week because I think the first week you're, you're running on adrenaline. So you're like, you're, you have a nonstop to do list. You're like still excited. You know, it's like changes. And then the second week you're like, 
oh, okay, we're in this. And it's like, oh man, am I tired? Okay. I think I meant like the first full week. I okay, think it yeah. was Friday evening of the first full week back. Like that's, that's what I'm saying. Like maybe it's not the first week because some people go back like institute day, Tuesday, Wednesday, yes. whatever. I'm talking like first full week of school in the trenches, Friday afternoon, you walk out of the building and it's like, uh-huh. Yes. Yes. Literally. That's what I tell my husband every year in August. I say, I'm, you know, excited for so many things, but I am not excited for the exhaustion because it's like, you know, so many people know that like, you're just, you run nonstop for nine months. And then the summer you're like, oh. <laughs> So. Well, I like your Candace is saying that uh, they have Friday night football games are back, and she's so excited. I think that's the the best way to combat beginning of the year exhaustion is to make make a plan for the end of the week that you're really excited about. So whether you want to be crazy like Candace and go to a football game, I don't know yeah. if that would be my pick, but power to you, Candace. I'm so excited for you. But even if it's just like a movie you've been excited to watch, and you know that like. Friday night, you're getting in PJs at the end of the day, and you're going to watch your favorite clip with the family on the couch or, you know, something that you can really look forward to so that when that yeah. exhaustion hits and maybe you're feeling a little grumpier than normal, you have something that you're looking forward to. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I think so having something to look forward to, even just the end of the week too, you know, to kind of keep you going is always a good thing. Yeah. You know, yesterday we talked about having Sunday jitters. And yes. like getting ready for the week. And it, it wasn't, it's not coming from, from a place of like not wanting to go to school. No. I, you know, I sent out an email yesterday. You know, many of you are on our, our Teach Better Team email list. It, it's about excitement. It's about wanting to do well. I think some of us have that at the end of the week too, where we're like mm. so tired that we're nervous even to enter into the weekend because we're not sure, you know, yeah. like what's going to come of that. And so that's just finding the balance in, in your calendar to try and fill your calendar with as many positive things as possible, right? Yes. And I, I think it's funny because I didn't have, I I know you and I have talked, but I didn't really have any like jitters for the school year until yesterday. And then listening to you two, I was like, <sighs> no, we are here to send positivity, Katie. Don't tell us that after talking about it now. No, it was like a good thing. Like it like was like, okay, it's hap like, let's go. You know, I've let's get back. I went to school yesterday. Like I felt like it was a good thing, but it was like, I needed it. I needed it yesterday. Cause yeah. Well, I have to say, um, I was talking to somebody the other day that was asking when school started. And I have found that most schools in the Midwest are, are getting up and rolling. I know East Coast is usually uh, a little bit later. So yeah. I'm kind of thinking like the next four weeks, everybody's kind of getting yeah. ready for welcoming students back. Whether you started last week, started this week, or you have a few weeks ahead of you, everyone once August hits like kind mm -hmm. of in the groove of at least considering what this fall is going to look like for them. And so I'm really excited that we kicked off the, the daily drop-in so we could talk yeah. about tips and tricks. We could talk about some anxieties. We could build you up, bring you some good mornings, good news stories. And for me, I just think having a seven-year-old give you motivational chats makes yeah. a lot of sense. So yeah. all of you after the daily drop-in should go look up this seven-year-old boy who is sharing his inspiration with not only awesome. parents, but students, hopefully, as, as his messages yeah. get will be cool. Yeah. Can I um, just, can I just say the good news. I had this idea um, and I'm, I'm hoping I can find good news for every day, but this is going to become my bell ringer. I decided. Oh, oh yeah. So I, I've always done like just some sort of bell ringer. That's like sort of math related. You know, every once in a while, I'll like kind of fold something in, you know, nonchalantly uh, so they don't totally notice, but I try to do something fun, whether it's like a, um, you know, a, a brain teaser or like a random fact or like today's national pizza day. But I decided that this needs to be part of the rotation. And I, so it can spark discussion. And I haven't decided exactly if it's going to be every day or, you know, every couple of days, but so thanks teach better team. I I'm a fan. I think that's great. Yeah. Even if you did it like only on Wednesdays, you could take any good mm -hmm. news story we did from Wednesday to Wednesday and, and use that. So that yeah, exactly. I will say I have really liked starting the morning with good news. I think that it allows us to to think about like all the wonderful things out there and also hopefully mm -hmm. bring some conversations to um, our colleagues or our students. I, I think it's kind of fun. And I think there's so many different things we can dive into. I know when Brad Hughes was here last week, 
we kind of discussed all the different lenses that you could look through anytime you share good news with students, whether it's yeah. a quick two second discussion in class or maybe make an entire lesson of it. But um, I think having those like little fun facts in the back pocket kind mm -hmm. of allows you to foster conversations. Yeah, absolutely. I will say, um, okay, first of all, to address Alex's question, then I have one more question about your daughter. Alex says, so the daily drop-in is going to go all year round to help Katie. Yes. yes. At this point, Alex, I know you're kind of kidding, but for real, we are doing daily drop-in every single morning, Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. Eastern. So Katie, strictly because you're doing this, um, you know, bell ringer, we are going Thank to keep you. the daily drop-in going to help you with your good news. I promise. Thank you. So that means I'll just, I'll tune in. You guys will give me the good news and then I'll just, I'll do it. It'll be great. Thanks guys. Yeah. I was looking at the calendar because obviously we're booking guests to be a part of daily yeah. drop in. So I was looking at the calendar of what days we have open and, and who we want to invite on and the, the overall themes that we have every single mm -hmm. week of who we can bring in to actually speak to those themes and what days we don't have daily drop in, like what days occur where a daily drop in isn't happening. And to be honest, we had an entire debate of like, is there ever a day where a daily drop in would be, like canceled or like, like for instance, friends, let's actually discuss this. We have a big group listening right now. And I know this is probably not why you're listening. So in the comments, let's just take a vote. I don't know if Jeff Gargas is yeah. here, but Jeff, you should probably sign off and not listen to this part. So like Thanksgiving morning, like, do we really <laughs> need a daily drop in? Like, that's what I'm trying to understand, you know? Okay. Well, I guess you have to think if someone doesn't want to listen, they can listen later. It's oh, okay. Um, let's let's change that though. What if what if I'm saying that, that might be a small percentage of people? I'm not saying that's what people will do, but I'm saying like if someone feels strongly that that on Thanksgiving morning at 6 a.m. they have plans, right? I personally do not because on Thanksgiving I I don't do anything that early, but I feel like you could still do it. The people who want to start their day with whoever. But but here's the deal, Katie. So it's at 6 a.m. our time. So I don't know who's going to be up that early on Thanksgiving morning. And does Ray need to be up that early on Thanksgiving? Oh, so let, let me rephrase this. So you want to know if you need to get up and do it. That could be a great day for Jeff and Dave. Oh, oh, so we could we could actually look at the calendar like, is there any days that Ray wants to sleep in? And then we'll just make Jeff host the show that day is what yes. you're saying. Yes. Okay. What about like Christmas morning? Like, is there a daily drop in Christmas morning? Like, I mean, I'm just saying like, these are, these are the hard hitting decisions that we need to make here on the Teach Better team. Isn't, what if you did like days that businesses are closed? Okay. So then we had that discussion. Is it only federal holidays? So on federal holidays in the U.S. So for, in, then it came up. Do we have daily drop in on Labor Day? I don't feel like I, I don't, people in the comments, please help. I can't make these yeah. decisions. There's a lot of comments coming in from all different platforms right now. We're streaming on Facebook, YouTube, yes. and Twitch. And I appreciate all of you listening. So we do want to hear your vote. Uh, I'll be honest yeah. with you. I kind of made the decision yesterday, but, but maybe <laughs> by your, maybe by your votes, you'll sway my opinion. So feel free to add your opinions okay. in the comments. And if you're listening, by the way, on Teach Bear Talk podcast, which publishes right after we finish going live, you can still um, message us. Alex, let's know about Kashmir Pulaski Day. I will let you know that I have no idea if we're doing daily drop-in that day, but I do know that that is around March 6th because sometimes it's on my birthday. That's all hey. I'm I know. But then I guess that's a question. Do you need to get up early on your birthday? Well, I mean, every year you want it to get better and better. And what better way to start the following so year of your life than by doing daily drop-in? Yeah. I mean, I guess it gets the party started early, right? Thing. Yeah, it'd be great. Okay, Katie, I we have to get into our discussion. We want to get into Brainstorm Bank. I have some questions for you. I have okay. a really hard hitting question for you right off the bat. So we're going to transition really quick to our Brainstorm Bank. And then we're getting into these questions. Okay. If you have a question that you want us to discuss, whether it be something to brainstorm for your school year, maybe something about communication, that's our theme this week. Or if you just want to know like Katie's shoe size, let us know in the comments. We'll get there in a second. Yeah.
Brainstorm Bank, one of my favorite segments. We do this every single day on our daily drop-in where we open up questions to everyone in our community to simply be here to brainstorm. We don't necessarily have the answers and our advice isn't always good, but we are gonna do our stinking <laughs> best to connect you with somebody who might have a solution that might help you in some way. You can always head over to submit questions at teachbetter.com slash brainstorm bank in case you have a question that pops into your mind in the middle of the day and you're like, oh my gosh, I don't want to forget to submit this for daily drop-in. So feel free to head over to teachbetter.com slash brainstorm bank to submit your questions. And then of course, we're live every single morning, Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. Eastern. So you can always just like throw your question in the comments and we'll do our best to answer it. We are going to start off with a very, very, very important question. Okay. And and it has to do with your first grader that's headed back to school. Okay. I, I just have to know, is it a thing first day outfits? Like, is oh, it yeah. a thing? What's your plan? I know you're not type A at all. So how do you work with that? <laughs> uh, yeah, no. First day of school outfits, absolutely. Um, even my mom, when we grew up, you bought a new outfit for the first day of school. Mm -hmm. And so of course my mom came in town a couple weeks ago. What did she bring? A new outfit for both of our children for their first day of school. So yeah, absolutely. You got to take those pictures, you know, and okay. Can I just be totally transparent? I don't know anything apparently about elementary school because I, we had multiple first days, you know, as we know, last year was in and out. So we had a first day of virtual school which it didn't matter what she was wearing because she was at our house. But then when she went back in person, I, you know, was like, okay, we have a first day of where people see you outfit. Okay. So I sent her in these really cute boots. They were adorable, but you know what you shouldn't send your kids in really cute boots because they have PE. So the first day of in-person learning, my daughter comes home and says, yeah, I couldn't participate in PE because I didn't have tennis shoes. Oh, mom alert right there. Okay, oh, there's no. comments coming in of people at least kind of having that moment. That seems realistic. Yeah, so I'm, I'm like a really great mom, I guess. So have the really great outfit, but think through the tennis shoe piece. That's my tip. I feel like that's a very, very important tip. I don't know anything about that, but I will tell you, I think shoes are essential for the outfit. And Thank so you. if you're not thinking through the need for tennis shoes, you are you are scarring your child's success is really what it sounds like. Right. So we quickly learned to just make sure that her shoes are either on her feet or in her backpack. Because you could wear cool shoes and then have the sneakers in the backpack. Yes. But, you know, on the first day, they're taking all of their 8,000 supplies. So mm -hmm. I didn't think to put tennis shoes. I would not thought that either. Okay. This brings up an entirely new question. And I'm going to need all of you to participate in the comments for this one. So please click on the comments. Even if you're listening in your car, I need you to pull over really quick. Can we talk about, like, tennis shoes versus sneakers versus gym shoes? What Aren't they all the same? Well, yeah, but you say tennis shoes and I literally would net that would never come out of my book, like out of my mouth. That's not in my book. What would you call them? Gym shoes or sneakers. Oh, OK. OK. I mean, I feel like I use them kind of interchangeably. But I think it's actually based on where you live in the country, like where you live, whether you're mm -hmm. watching, you know, we have an international audience watching our daily drop in morning show. But I think that it's kind of like soda and pop. You know, I was just thinking the same. Okay. So we do have some comments coming in. Some people are saying okay. sneakers. Can I tell you, Katie, I was doing a keynote in Arkansas. I think I've told this story before to our network. So I'm at a keynote in Arkansas. I'm on this big, beautiful stage, full auditorium. We are, we are kicking it. It was by the way, pre COVID, right? Everyone's like right. really close and laughing and having a great grand old time. So in the <laughs> middle of my thing, I like make a joke about highway versus interstate, which apparently is also a, a like where you live type thing. We could get into that separately. So my, okay. my example, cause I'm like just talking, we're like amped up in this like big auditorium, right? I'm like, it's kind of like soda and Coke. And so then I pose to the audience, by the way, mic'd up on stage. And I'm like, what do you guys? Oh no. Oh no. I soda and, and what Pop? is it? Pop. I was like, it's like soda and pop. I was like, which one do you guys say, soda or pop? And the entire audience in unison says Coke. I was like, oh, that's not even something I would have thought. So I'm like, boom. And then we went on a huge tangent. I was like, what if you're ordering a Sprite? You wouldn't be like, can I have a Coke 
what type Sprite. I'm like, that doesn't make sense. The entire right. audience agreed that I was wrong. All of them were like responding in unison as if they had planned it. No. And I was like, no. what is Dr. Pepper? And they'd be like, order, I'd like a Coke. What kind? Dr. Pepper. I'm like, what? What? Okay, well, what happens when you want Pepsi? I, you can't apparently. <laughs> no. Yeah, I, no, I don't understand. Like, which do you say if you're ordering a fuzzy beverage? Fizzy beverage? Not fuzzy. I don't, I don't usually order fuzzy ones. I order fizzy ones sometimes. And I would say a pop. See, I say soda. Why is that? I don't know. Cause we're in the same state. <laughs> okay. Let's go back to um, these comments. Now I just scroll all the way up. Cause we've had a lot of debate over this and this is why There's... I teach better family. They really show up during these hard hitting topics. We yes. You know, what's funny is I thought we were going to talk about education stuff, but I, like this is seems way more intense. To be fair, we did discuss your daughter's first day outfit. So we're getting yeah, there. That's, we're true. Getting there. that's okay. true. I'm seeing sneakers, gym shoes, sneakers, sneakers for sure. Megan says tennis shoes. So Megan's kind of an outlier here. Megan, okay. I don't remember where you live. Can you tell me? Carrie says tennis shoes. She lives in Illinois. See, Andrea says she would never use tennis shoes. Um, like if you're going to buy them at the store, if you're like, I'm going to buy blank at the store, what would you say? I would say, well, like I would say gym shoes or sneakers. I would literally never say tennis shoes. That would not even come oh. to my mind. I'm not going to lie. I don't think I would ever use sneakers. <laughs> Michigan tennis shoes or more accurate, more accurately, tennis shoes when you tennis say shoes. it quickly. That's true. Yeah, that's true. Okay, Sandra's throwing in a whole nother thing here. She's talking about running shoes. Yeah, okay, but then I feel like, do you have to run? I don't know. Do you have to play tennis in tennis shoes? Oh. Well, <laughs> come on. Now like, I'm going to. I just want that that moment clipped. If somebody could do that of Katie going, oh. <laughs> the best, best moment ever. Um, Karen's now shifting. She says expressway. No, that's too much. That's like big city. What do you say? Interstate. Oh, really? I say yeah. highway all the way. Like, okay. If you were to drive to my house, I take the highway. Oh no. <laughs> okay. okay. We also a time out. You're choosing to ignore a comment and I want you to acknowledge it. Wait, I am it. Did I pass it yet? Oh my gosh, there's so many. I'm not there yet. Hold on. It's 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 worth it. Okay. Candace says, uh, wait, I don't know what topic you're talking about, but there's a lot going on. I have Okay, I'm gonna pull it up. I'm gonna pull it up. It's okay. Oh, it's <laughs> my mom. She says, it's your mom. And I grew up saying pop, so I have no idea what happened to you. <laughs> Julie, you and me both. You and me both. Okay, I think, okay, to be fair, I agree. When I grew up under my mom's roof, we said pop only. I think soda transitioned when I moved to central Illinois. But you live in central Illinois, so I don't understand how that's a thing. Right, because I say pop. I don't know what's wrong with you. You say I, it wrong. Or you do. Can I preface, Karen is bringing up bathing suit. Is there a difference of what you would say with what you would wear to the beach? Swimsuit. Swimsuit. Whoa, hold on. Okay, bathing suit, swimsuit. Is there another? Or is it just those between those two? I don't know, but you've thrown me. Now I can't look at any of these comments because I just keep thinking the tennis shoe. Like, so if I'm wearing a bathing suit, I'm not bathing. <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> right like guys here's the problem you've all commented so much that we can't show any of them because they're just going so quick so and they're all like mind-blowing I don't this is I, a lot before 7 a.m this is I, a lot. I feel like this is a big deal and she's saying hashtag team expressway I would never say expressway I think you have to live in the city if you're gonna say expressway yeah like if I were in Chicago but wait time out you kind of live near Chicago so you should start saying that so you can't to... say highway I don't count because I grew up in the north suburbs of Chicago moved to central Illinois which I feel like is where my dialect comes from and now I'm back in the Chicago land I'm lost I need a home I'm lost and Mike I'm I can't I can't can we talk about Mike Yes. Do you drive on the driveway and park on the parkway? No, but I should now. Thank you, Mike. 
I cannot handle these. Alex is claiming that highway, interstate, and expressway are all related but are different things. Is that yeah. the case for everything we've discussed? Because I agree with Alex because a highway and an interstate are actually two different things and an expressway is also a different thing. Right, but I don't think the argument for tennis shoe versus running shoe versus gym shoe. Sneaker. Well, gym shoe would be when you're going to the gym, right? What so if you're going to your... watch a basketball game? You don't need gym shoes to go watch a basketball game. You're just that's sitting that's, there. That's what I was going to ask. So does the activity based on the title of what you're wearing on your feet? Because if you're going to a basketball game, they could be basketball shoes. No, I think that's different. Mm -mm, no. No, I just feel like this. Can we like talk other things? Because this is kind of stressing me out. I feel like my whole language needs to change. Only if you answer this one here. And if you're listening on the podcast, I know you can't see this comment. So give me a second and you'll know what I'm talking about. But right now we are streaming on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Twitch. It is early in the morning, people. And this, I think, is going to be the end of our discussion. Katie, I have made put a comment from YouTube up on the screen. Yes. Can you say that, please? Cran, cran crown <laughs> okay how do you say the colored thing you take out of the box for school okay i had to think about it in a, being authentic hey harper would you like a crayon so Car i'm probably in category one which makes me not be able to speak english wait crayon would be the first one that she wrote wouldn't it be there's no like crayon like i don't enunciate yeah, like Alex's comment, crayon rhymes with tan. That's how I feel like I say it. I say crayon too, but oh, otherwise it would be crayon or something. I don't crayon. know. Crayon, crayon. Yeah, I don't. Mm. Crayon all the way. There's there's no debate here. You are saying it wrong if you're not saying it that way. Or none of us know how to read. Wait, crayon, two syllables. Who is that? Put your name after your comment. We need to know. I hope it's Julie. <laughs> it's not. My mom would not say that. I don't know. Okay, all these people are saying crayon pretty consistently. I also want to know how many of these people that say crayon say them frequently. Either they're an elementary teacher or they're a parent. Because there's a, you know, there's certain things you say fast because of your audience. Oh. Does that make sense? Like, if you're saying it just, like, I got to say things quick. Otherwise, the listening ears go off real fast in my house. So. So you need to go to your daughter and specifically be like, Harper, take this crayon. Yes. Right? Like, like, it's got to be fast. Okay, <laughs> so Ray, right, you need to move back to Central Illinois. You know, belong I agree. To Thanks. I assume that's my mom. Thanks, mom. Or I agree. It's, or it's Mark Heller, and he's just being mean. I mean, it really could be anyone these days. Right. I mean, I feel like you're really being welcomed into the Chicagoland area. So hey, to to help guys, I'm headed back to Central Illinois uh, tomorrow. I'll be there all day. I'm going to Farmington, Illinois, which is over near Peoria, Illinois. Uh, so it should be fun. Yeah. yeah. Are you going to hit up your favorite coffee spot? I kind of feel like I have to because yeah. Zion Coffee, which all of you know, because you're a part of the Teach Better family, this is like history right here. Uh, I love Zion Coffee and I moved away and it was really sad, but they're selling their coffee shop. So I feel like I need to go and have like one last coffee before they sell it. I absolutely agree. If you don't, I'll be disappointed. I know. Hey, um, high five, friend, that we've gone 38 minutes and not discussed anything valuable. Can we get at least into kind of into our like topic this week? Do, does anyone care? Or should we just keep debating crayons and, and tennis shoes? And tennis no. shoes literally is wrong. I don't know. I can't tell that you that. That stresses me out. That conversation was the most stressful conversation hopefully I'll have all week. Can we move on to something like better? Wait, please? wait. let's talk about value. Could you bring this conversation to your students as a bell ringer to get some discussion going without a doubt. Yeah. I feel like it's, you could do it with so many things. You could even have them create like, like our comments, create a bank of what are all the things people say? I know that I have done the pop and soda um, conversation and it is so interesting. Like the difference of just kids and so how they're so adamant, you know, some like kids are so like, no, like, like you are with some of them. Obviously. Like, why would you even say pop? Like it's, you know, it's just, it's so funny to see their like kind of personalities, like get so adamant. It's like, I don't know. It's kind of fun. Okay. So my question is, and we're getting some comments saying that people have done this and they love to do this. So I'm a fan. I would totally do this with students, but is there any concern that you're getting a group of students in your classroom that kind of all live in your general area? If they go to your school district in most States, so wouldn't they typically use the same 
the same word because they grew I up mean, in the same area? Maybe, but I think yes and no. I think you could, but it also sparks the discussion. No, Holly. No. I'm sorry. We have to discuss. I don't mean to cut you off. Say that word. Caramel. Yeah, caramel. Okay. Versus caramel. Caramel. Lit. Yeah. No, I don't. Caramel sounds like fancy. Um, no, but I think it can spark the discussion with like, well, my grandma says this or my aunt from this place. Like that's the conversations I feel like I hear. I also, I teach five different sections. So a lot of times I'll say like, oh my gosh, first hour all did this or voted on this. You know, we've done, we kind of do all kinds of surveys. Sometimes we'll like, what's your favorite chip or what's your favorite you know, ice cream. And so it's always fun to like compare classes to like if there's a majority. So you could always do that too. I think that's Holly so fun. not happy with us. No, Holly, you're, we love you. We love that you're a Teach Better ambassador and we love that you're commenting on Daily Drop-In, but out of pure love and truly, Holly, you know, you are, I have so much love for you. You are wrong. You are wrong. I like that you say that, but Candace's comment literally right before that is, no one is right or wrong. And yet here you are saying oh, okay. that Holly's wrong. I'm just trying to be a good, a good leader right there. Let's trying go. to spread the love. And, and I just speak the truth, y'all. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> like the answer is soda, sneakers, uh, caramel, highway. I'll, I'll give you all the right answers. It's fine. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you, Ray, for learning, teaching us how to speak. Yes. Wait, I'm confused on this right here. Okay. Yeah. I moved, I moved into a town where some of the population refers to a sweatshirt as a sweater. I could see that. So you're saying like, oh, okay, hold on. I have more questions. So like the thing with the hood is not a sweater. It's a, a hoodie. So, oh my God. Now we're opening. <laughs> I don't understand. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, we've got like 20 minutes left. I know. I'm sorry. Okay. I can't. I can't handle you. Okay, this one is not a debate, Brianna. We are moving on from this topic. It's a pillow. There's no there's no middle debate here. It's not it's never a pillow. That those people don't know how to pronounce pillow, right? Yeah. Like Yeah. I although I think I am guilty of saying it. One of our one of my coworkers likes to point it out and he he likes to make fun of me because I'll say it like fast, not like not thinking of what I'm saying. You know, I'm like are you admitting publicly on Daily Drop-In that sometimes you say pillow? Like, rarely. Rarely. I would never. Okay. We need to move forward because I'm worried about our friendship. And we've been friends for a long time and it shouldn't end over Daily Drop-In. Okay. Fair. Katie McGlann, I need some tips on communication stuff. I want you to imagine that I'm headed back to the classroom. Okay. Let's say next week. So I have all week this week to kind of soak up my last few days of summer. But I also want to make sure that I am being productive and proactive and thinking yep. about my communication. So can you give me some tips or tricks that I can legitimately do this week so I can prepare for students next week? Yep. So um, the biggest thing that I have done, oh, probably like the last five or six years is I have a communication log and it is literally just mm -hmm. columns. Um, it says student name, parent name, how did I communicate with them? And it's just, a, it's, I like have a checkbox. So it's, um, did I send them an email? Did I send them a message? You know, if you use some sort of platform that you can send direct messages, did you call them? Um, did you leave a message? And then what was the conversation about? So what was your kind of your focus? So was it something positive, something negative, some, you know, just kind of general? And I keep it not only in my plan book, I have like a plan book that isn't just a planner. It's like, you know, a lot of stuff. And then I also keep it right by my phone. Um, so that if I make a quick call, I can just document it right there. Okay. I have a logistics question on that. Can I ask? Yep. Specific? Okay. So I've kept a, a contact log in the past and I have found that my success rate in like keeping up with it mm -hmm. really comes down to like, it needs to be as easy as possible for me yep. to document. And so I've done a variety of things. One is like for a class hour, all the kids are on one page and it's kind of like, you have a small amount of space to document what you can. And so you're using like shorthand or symbols to like mm -hmm. show some sort of dialogue. Um, the other is like where every kid gets its own, gets their own page. And so you kind of like an ABC book by, by last name or by first name where you're keeping notes. What's your go-to for this coming year? And why did you choose one system over the other? 
So the the document I've used and it, it has worked for me is it's blank. So I don't have any student name in there. I put them in there. And the reason I like it is that I, I'm going to be totally honest. There are months where it's like, there's nothing in there, even though I know I've communicated, you know, we just, it's like, I have to make a quick call. I don't think about it. Right. Um, but I do like going through and seeing how often names appear because to me, then I'm like, oh, I've communicated a lot with this parent. Is it all positive? Is it negative? Or should I ba start balancing it out? And so I feel like it's always a good reflection. So do you make that on your own or is it something that you've like purchased and you're using? Um, I think I originally got it probably off of Teachers Pay Teachers and then I tweaked it. It's I literally just call it communication tool. Okay. And like I said, it's it's just a bunch of columns that I've just kind of tweaked of um, like uh, something that was in the original document was just, it was like email message or um, phone call. Well, I needed a spot to document that I left a message. And so I tweaked it to put like, I left a message. And then I also put the date. And so it was like, like, so that I know, okay, I called, but then maybe I needed to follow up or maybe that message like was enough. Um, so yeah. Well, it's interesting, depending on how you format this document, there's a few different like data points you can collect and reflect on. One is if you put the names in only as it happens, I really love your evaluation of like, then I can see how often mm -hmm. this communication is happening. On the flip side, if you put all of your students in at once, then mm -hmm. you can kind of go back and also see what parents you really never spoke to, or at least right. never documented you spoke to. Right. So our team, um, you know, so I teach five sections. I teach a, on a team, a middle school team. And so in a given year, we have about 150 students that kind of go through our classrooms. Um, I know you had that too. And so our team takes one hour in the first month of school, we call every parent. So that we just, it's just a quick, hey, I'm such and such. I'm your child's fifth hour teacher. I'm calling on behalf of our team. We're welcoming you to the school year. And we just kind of in, make those initial phone calls so that they have a contact person. They at least have a name. If they need to get a hold of someone, then they at least have like one name, one teacher. Well, and let's go through some like some actual logistics of that, because I love that you guys have done that. I think that's so important to have contact with as many parents as possible. But like a lot of people in the comments are saying, like, either you have a, a small group. So maybe you're in an elementary setting yeah. and you only see 30 families sometimes you're in a high school setting, you see 150 different kids, right. you guys meet as a group in your team and mm -hmm. essentially like decide what class hour you're calling. So yeah. for example, um, Miss Jessie, who you work with is going to also call her fifth hour while you call your fifth hour. Yes. So those groups of parents are only getting one contact, but they at least have a familiar face that they can reach out to. Yeah. And we, we kind of keep our message the same. So we talk and say, what are we, you know, what are the things we want to touch on? And so, Depending on the conversation, sometimes some years we bring up like, hey, we have a website, we have an Instagram, we have a Twitter, like how how can you get a hold of us? Um, and other years, it's just simply like, hey, we're excited to see you. I know last year that was um, a big part. That was something we really, really wanted to do was have a communication with every family. And um, so we we do it every year and it, it, every year it's, you know, it's on the long list of things that go on your to do list. And it's very challenging some years to like okay, I've got to do this. I've got to sit down and call, you know, five families right now and just knock a few out. So making it a priority though, is always like, it always it feels good. And it always like, I feel like has a lot of benefit. So those personal outreaches that you can do early in the year, you really discuss like setting the tone, wanting to be yes. a friendly face, wanting to open up that line of communication before even they need to. And you're really just trying to extend kind of like outreach your hand and say, I'm here when, and if you ever need yes. me, I'm, I'm here to support your child. You can do that a lot of ways through a phone call or, or writing a handwritten note or whatever. Yeah. I will tell you, Katie, I am currently four days into needing to write some handwritten notes to some, some people. And I think it's a mental block of like feeling like that takes longer than it does. So yeah. therefore you don't start. And I think phone calls can be the same thing where you're looking at this list and you're like, I have 30 families I need to call within the next two weeks it's overwhelming and you think it's going to take forever. So you like mm -hmm. don't ever get started. I don't know if that 
makes sense. Oh, I, I 100% agree. I feel like it's always, there's always like one of us on the team that's like, Hey, I started calling. It didn't take that long, you know, like kind of to build everybody else up. Um, so yeah, I, I like that. We just have that positive connection because, you know, with seventh grade, some parents start to back off and we talk to some parents and they're like, I'm really trying to let my student take the reins of their, you know, their schooling. So it's nice to just have that initial contact and just kind of throw it out there because we may not talk to that parent for a while. And it, you know, it might be, you know, a couple months before we touch base with some of those families for no reason other than it's just not needed. So well, it's and nice then, to have that. And that doesn't mean you're not sending like mass communication out. Exactly. That one-on-one personal communication. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, so how long do you think a phone call actually takes? Like if you're sitting in your desk, like your teacher desk at school, and you're like, okay, I'm going to dial the number. I'm going to wait for the ring. I'm going to say hello. And then mm-hmm. I'm going to hang up. Like how, how many? Like three up? minutes. I would say yeah. three minutes. I think so too. I think that we think though, that if we're going to call three families, it's going to take an hour. The yeah. reality is you're going to call three families. It's going to take you 15 minutes. Right. And I think, you know, you, if you know some families, obviously those conversations could last longer. Like if we've had siblings and stuff, but I think just kind of like, I like to sandwich some families that I, I know in between some families, maybe I don't know. So it, like, I don't know, just, it kind of flows better. Um, so yeah. yeah. And I know that we are, we're at like that 10 minute mark of, of ending our daily drop in this morning, but I do feel like we need to at least discuss like the elf in the room. There are a lot of educators that I've worked with a lot of educators that I know who are terrified of talking to parents on the phone. Mm -hmm. I used to be that educator and still have some of that like anxiety because we've all had that terrible phone call or two or three that kind of scarred our career. Um, Do you have like a tip or a trick that you use to make the phone calls kind of like go easily. I don't know how to phrase that. Yeah, actually, I I was that person. Um, my second year of teaching, I had I was completely caught off guard by a really bad parent conversation. We've all been there. But it took me a long time to be able to pick up the phone and have a conversation again with the parent. In fact, I would do everything in my power. I'm like, hey, I'll go make your copies if you call this parent. Right. And I finally, I had a co-teacher um, and some team members who knew that was a point of anxiety for me. And so they would come to my room and they would just sit in my classroom and they'd sit near the phone so they could hear. And they would just validate after I hung up, like, Hey, this is like some positive things you said, maybe in the future, consider saying this, like they just gave me feedback until eventually I didn't need them. And so if it was a parent that I maybe didn't know, or I knew that I had a lot of anxiety about, they, I would just call them. And I still, I still teach with some of those people. And so yeah, they still come and they'll kind of like, just reassure, just be there. Like you said the right things, you did what you needed to do, you know, good job. So I think just having some of those people in your corner help. I love, I love the cheerleader mentality. I think that's so good to always have people that, that can build you up, especially when you're nervous. Another thing that I've seen done a ton. And again, I, I, not only for myself, but, but in seeing other educators who have this anxiety, but know that it's, it's a great way to connect with parents, guys, the, the art of being able to share your voice and and have them hear your tone of your tone and that communication is so important um, is to like do a little post-it or like index card or a few notes of yes. what you know you want to say. Like start with hello, obviously. Decide how mm-hmm. you're going to introduce yourself. What introduction do you want to share? What are you going to explain of who you are and why you're calling? And then I typically suggest like have one question for them. And, and not just a question like, is there anything you need, but ask them about maybe something you want to know about their student. You know, it can be a general question you're asking everybody and then know how you're getting out of the conversation, right? Yes. So this is a call that doesn't really have a, an intention besides to say hi. So knowing like what line you're going to use to say, all right, well, truly, I just wanted to reach out and thank you. And, you know, I really believe that that parents and teachers are in partnership. So if you ever need anything, please feel free to reach out. And, you know, I appreciate you taking the time, but I know you have a long day ahead of you that I want to be respectful of. So you kind of like, you're getting yourself out of the conversation as well. Yeah. And I think too, kind of going in with, um, I know Candace just dropped a comment in there talking about like kind of a partnership. And I think that's super important. Um, That was something definitely in, you know, in the last few years I've transitioned to of approaching the conversation of we're in a partnership. So 
if I know I have to make a tough conversation or tough call with a parent and I need to um, tell them something maybe not so positive, I frame it as I'm here to work with you. What do you think is going to work for your child so they can be successful in my class? What's your experience with them at home? And I feel like it just kind of takes away some of the tension and it's not me calling to like tattle on their student. It's more like, I, I know that we can do this and I know we can get, you know, past this. So you know, it's interesting. Obviously, we're talking about parent communication all week on Daily Drop-In. That's our theme this week. Last week, we focused on, on a different topic. And so every theme, every week that we start fresh, we want to make sure that our guests are able to share a number of different relevant tips and tricks to help each and every one of you throughout your time. And I think parent communication, stakeholder communication, student communication is something that we could talk on all year. I mean, there's oh my so gosh. many things, so many things you can do, so many different ideas. And and the reality is that whether it's a video or a phone call or or whatever, I, I really just want to emphasize Jeff Gargas was live yesterday with us for Daily Drop-In on Monday. And, and you really just want to make sure that your communication is consistent. That was a big mm -hmm. focus of his is that you want to find, you, you want to set expectations, you want your parents to get to know you, and you want them to understand how to communicate with you so you can effectively communicate with them as well. And so yeah. I love the, the, the idea of, making contact with all of your families within the first few weeks of school. Yeah. It's a big pain in the butt. And I know that we're so busy and oh my gosh, the to-do lists that come at the beginning of the year, we've been discussed yeah. like how tired you are, right? You're yeah. so tired the first weeks of school, but communication is really important for setting yourself up for success for the year. So do not diminish the hard work that we know needs to go into that area. So important. And I think be be mindful of what you can manage. You know, that's when things that's when you drop the ball is when you try to take on these big ideas, big tasks. I'm going to do a weekly newsletter. I'm going to do this. And then it's middle of the year. You get tired and those things start to fall apart. So really reflect on what are you going to be capable of mm -hmm. and be able to keep up with consistently. And maybe you start small. Maybe it's just once a month that you you know do something. Um, but just really be mindful of like what can you handle and try not to bite off more than you can chew for sure. Well, and that's an interesting point that you bring up, and I'd really love to get into that later this week with other guests that are joining us. I know Holly Stewart's joining us. We're probably going to debate caramel versus caramel. Good I know Brad is joining us tomorrow, and we have Dr. Neil Gupta joining us on Friday. But but Candace just wrote, you know, I love the videos you send out, Ray. I want to clarify that, that, Katie, you just brought up an, an entirely new point that we have to discuss sometime this week, which is taking on only the communication that you truly can handle because I love sending out videos, but yes, I do believe that video is an incredible medium to be able to communicate wholeheartedly. It's also the easiest medium for me. So mm -hmm. there's a lot that goes into your communication style that is not only considering your audience, you have to do that, but you also really have to consider what's gonna make your life easier. And the reality is, is that even if typing out mm -hmm. a newsletter every week was maybe better for my audience, I would struggle yeah, that consistently because that's not the medium that comes naturally to me. So it's going to take longer. It's going to be more challenging and I'm probably going to avoid it versus a video. Right. It's easier for me. So I find that that communication has to be a balance between what you can handle, like you were saying, and also obviously consider your audience, which is important. So. Yeah, absolutely. Without question. Yeah. So fun. You know, Katie, you are coming live with us on Daily Drop-In again next week. I will not be here, but it's like you're going to have a really good time with Dr. Dave Schmidto. So I don't know what you'll be discussing, but I can only assume it's going to be good. Do you think Dave has a strong opinion versus like pop and soda or tennis shoes and gym shoes? I, I don't know. I don't know. I just feel like you know, this was, this was a lot. So I think I'm going to need stronger coffee next week because, you know, I thought daily drop-in would be a lot easier, but this was, there was a lot of debates today. So I have a lot of thinking to do today. I okay. Decided. Here's the, here's the problem though. I don't know who started this. I was it. I think it's your fault. I'm pretty sure if I went back and rewatched this video, it came down to Harper and her shoe choices, her first day of school. That's okay. what started this. Here's the thing. This is the takeaway. If she would have been allowed to wear her boots, this conversation wouldn't have happened. <laughs> Lesson learned, don't wear boots. Unless it's fall or winter, then boots are great. But bring sneakers just in case. Or tennis shoes, or running shoes, or, or shoes. all the things. 
all the things. Guys, we hope you have a wonderful rest of your morning for daily drop-in. We are just trying to be here to set the tone off for your day, and we love being able to kick off our morning together. I will say, Katie, we were sleepy at the beginning. I feel better now that it's like 9 a.m. or uh, Oh, my God, 9 a.m. Apparently, it's really well. It's only 7 a.m. Central, 8 a.m. Eastern. I was going to say, I think you've lost a couple hours of your day if it's nine. It's amazing how quickly the day goes these times. Guys, I hope that you enjoy your last sip of coffee. Cheers to you on an incredible day. We will see you again tomorrow morning with the incredible Brad Hughes as we get into not only our brainstorm bank that we do and always our good news, but we'll also have some recommendations for you. Last week, we recommended one of my favorite books. Tomorrow will be something brand new, and we are constantly here to support you, connect you with other educators, and maybe share a little bit of inspiration and some heated debate. So, Katie, thanks for joining us. Love you a lot. Yeah, thanks, guys. All right. We'll see you later, guys. See ya. Bye.